Spring, April, the time of year when many devout English pilgrims set off to visit the land they call Canterbury. I myself have prepared to go on such a pilgrimage. I have discovered a tavern called the Tabard Inn, where several other travelers have agreed to have my company on their journey. Here, let me describe them for you. The knight is a noble, loyal, honorable, and kind-hearted man. He has fought in 15 battles and has never lost once. Despite this, he remains humble. The prioress mimics the manners of the royal court. She speaks French with an English accent. She is an animal lover and pretty. The monk is a handsome man who likes to hunt and take care of his monastery's horses. He goes against the monastic order that discourages hunting. I agree with this argument. The friar lives the entirety of his life through begging. He enjoys making people happy. He is popular among wealthy landowners as he gives confessors an easy penance. Some change for the poor. The merchant constantly speaks of profits. However, he is in debt with his charisma. The clerk is a student of philosophy at Oxford. As she is so knowledge hungry, she devours books rather than food. The lawyer is a wise woman who prepares flawless legal documents. She makes herself seem busier than she really is. Franklin is a wealthy farmer. His chief attribute is his preoccupation with food, which he has a lot of in his house. The physician bases her practice of medicine on the knowledge of astronomy. She reads a little scripture and is somewhat frugal. The wife of Bath is always the first to the offering at Mass. She has five husbands and has taken three pilgrimages to Jerusalem. She is jolly and talkative and gives good love advice as she has lots of experience. The parson enjoys preaching to his parishioners but hates excommunicating those who can't pay their tithes. He believes a priest must be pure because he serves as an example for his congregation. The red-haired miller loves crude body jokes and drinking. She is able to lift doors off their hinges and knock them down by running at them. She steals from her customers and plays the bagpipes. The manciple stocks an inn of court with provisions. He is smarter than most of the lawyers he serves. He manages his lord's estate. The summoner arraigns those accused of violating church law. He uses his power for his own gain to dominate the young woman in his jurisdiction. In exchange for a quarter of wine, he would let a man sleep with his girlfriend for a year. The pardoner rides with the summoner. He is despised by the church for counterfeiting pardons and pocketing money. The host of the Tabard Inn is a very funny, jolly, wise woman. She told us that we were the largest group she's met this year. I propose that each of us tell two stories on the way to Canterbury. Whoever has the best tale will get a meal paid for by the rest of the team on their return. We departed the next morning for Canterbury, with the knight beginning his first tale. It's oh, great. Is this supposed to cover my chin or not? Under the chin, above the chin, under the chin. All right, I'm ready to fight some bad guys. <laughs> into a tree. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I ran into a tree. <laughs> John ran into the tree. I slipped on some ice and I shot the bow like this. <laughs> I said go! Oh, I didn't hear you. Go. 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 Oh, just missed. <laughs> There's a taxidermist. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Shut up. And you especially need Shut him. Shut up. You need him a lot. Especially you. And you. And you. But especially him. <laughs> this young soul. What do you like? Ha 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 ha!